growth through networks. That's been one of the, one of the underpinning factors to the growth for Kevl's business. Welcome to the session, Kev. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you, Emmett? Doing smashing. Thanks very much for making some time for the session. But well, let's right. get straight into it. Um, Kev, tell us a bit about your business and the kind of services you provide. Absolutely. So I uh, am the managing director of Cardboard Creative. Uh, we're a collaborative team of creatives. We basically try and resolve resourcing issues with in the creative sectors that business needs. So whether that's marketing, content creation, website, digital footprint, performance marketing, etc. So yeah, mm. we've got a you know a diverse group of people that all work together, and it's a great way of making sure that we all follow those business visions that and the business goals of our clients. And we keep awesome. it central. Awesome. Now your business has gone through many transitions, and um, you've grown significantly as well. And one of the key things you mentioned to me earlier on that's led to your growth is growing through your network. Talk to us a bit about the importance for well any business owner to have a good network and how they can leverage that for their growth. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when we first set up the business, we were facilitating kind of services and clients that we kind of met along the way, but they were outside of our personal network groups. Um, and, uh, you know, we, there's always a bit of a cliche about working for people, you know, or working with people, you know. Mm. Um, however, it was really obvious to me, um, especially when speaking and meeting with families and, you know, those social gatherings that most people didn't know what I did or what my business does. Um mm. So it's really important for us to, uh, you know, inform, educate all those kind of people within our network that have a vested interest in your success mm. um, to kind of garner more business. And actually it's, it's led to, well, we've signed four new clients in the last month wow. um, and they've all come through that personal network as opposed to the the kind of social footprint we create, our LinkedIn profiles, our website kind of outreach um, and because of the nature of our business um, with kind of numerous different people that look after different specific sectors, it's really nice for people to understand that we've got a lot more resourcing under our roof just because I don't mm. do it personally. I've got people around me that I trust. Um, but just because I'm a known quantity to my network means that they were trusted within that as well. And it has led to a really good opportunity of growth um, after what has been... I would say a tumultuous six months for us mm -hmm. with kind of our client line and losing a couple of clients. It gave us an opportunity to reset and kind of consider where do we want to get leads from um, and how our culture needs to align with our, our clients. Mm -hmm. um, so we were very selective on who we work with. Um, not everyone that we pitch to, if we don't feel that our kind of values align, will we go, yeah, we'll do the work. It's not about, it's not just about making the money. It's about making mm. a solid, strong relationship. Mm. Um, that's why we're a bit more selective now. And that's all learnings from the last six months, frankly. Yeah. I mean, they say experience can be a, a harsh teacher, but the most expensive teacher and however the best teacher. Mm. And it seems like the experience has definitely paid its, um, paid itself well with you. They mentioned the word trust a few times. Mm. and how that's so important in generating business uh, for yourself. Um, and you seem to have created a lot of trust within your, your immediate network to win over new customers. Like you said, you took on, what was it, four new customers in the last month or so? Yep, absolutely. Um, look, trust is part of the baseline of any relationship, whether mm. it's business or personal, um, especially when we talk about what we do as a service provider and being we talk about resource gapping and and filling those gaps for our clients, but it comes from understanding their core principles, their core mm -hmm. services, and their core kind of directive. Um, so if they don't trust us enough to inform us of that, then we can't really facilitate what they need correctly. Um, and that's why, you know, why we're selective about who we work with is there's a lot of times as kind of an agency, even though I don't like the term, you know, it's a little bit like we'll do anything to make some extra cash. Um, and I'm trying to break that philosophy. No, if you're not the right fit for us and we mm. don't think that our values align, then we're not going to do it. Mm. We're just talking of values, what would you say are um, the values that matter to you the most as an entrepreneur? Um, I have a what I would argue is quite a high bar on morality. Um, mm. I believe that certain especially in performance marketing and marketing generally there are 
some underhanded ways to get your your way ahead mm. i know business can be ruthless um mm. and brutal but um running your own business gives you enough stress and sleepless nights i don't want my own personal morals to be affected by that mm. um so yeah we draw quite a strong line on it um we want to make sure that we we generally support businesses that are are struggling to understand what digital can do for them um and that haven't truly opened their eyes up a lot of its non-profits um or small businesses and actually we're kind of leaning into a, a new age of working within the healthcare sector so doctor surgeries etc um nursing homes nurseries um obviously stable businesses but also they don't really leverage digital content as strongly as they could um and that's where we've kind of drawn our lines so we've had a couple of clients in the past who are willing to do anything to get their leg up and i'm not willing to do it for them is the fundamental line of it makes sense yeah. makes it awesome now you mentioned you explained a team structure earlier on of how how um you've got like an association type of model where you've got a group of specialists working together bringing their relevant skills together and almost working collaboratively like a like a team of employed people in one company yeah. but still not being employed um and that sounds like a very efficient way of working I and mean, we talk us through why that's a benefit and maybe why other business owners could or should consider that yeah absolutely we we use the term verified partners um mm. it's just our own terminology so myself and my business partner kind of have been at the center of cardboard but cardboard is grown through um, associated freelancers and business owners of other small agencies as it were and there is always going to be some crossover in what we our service provision is mm. but generally what we kind of lean into is the logic that if we all work together um, and we all have our specialism so we've got someone that specializes in digital marketing performance marketing social media management web design um we keep a lot of the graphic design and brand development in-house. That's kind of our skill set. And mm. then from a much more strategic point, I take on a lot of that. So from sales and strategy, I'll look after a client and handhold them through that journey and cherry pick the right people for the right job. So even though historically I worked in media, creative, photo, video content, I've now got a couple of entities, teams, businesses that I leverage all the time because that's all they do. That's their bread and butter day in, day out. Gotcha. And we get this kind of ability to say, yes, we've diversified. And a lot of people say diversification kind of dilutes what you do. Yes, but diversification, utilizing more resource and people that specialize means that actually we can service a client fully and yeah. the logic of like 360 servicing them. So that's, that's, that's how we've operated. And it obviously it lowers our overheads, lowers our risk. Um, and inevitably what's happening now is that the network that we've built within cardboard is bringing jobs into the kind of ecosystem as opposed to trying to facilitate and leverage those resources themselves like Makes it's sense. easier to put it all into one pipeline um and and actually it's led to us growing frankly because it everyone just led to like a one-stop shop for business owners to come to to address all their digital marketing say online creative needs etc absolutely stop shop and a lot of times business owners probably won't understand where do i start and it seems as if you can provide that initial and future but initial kind of clarity and hey look this is the world you're walking into these are the things that are available which one works best for you type thing which is really um important but looking ahead or rather before we look ahead let's look back now you've as all business owners you've gone through a journey Self, plenty of transitions, changes, etc. Since you started off in this business in 2017, what would you like to share as maybe your top three learnings in business to other business owners out there who are starting out or in a in a tumultuous situation? What would be your top three pieces of advice to? I think the the biggest piece of advice that I personally have lived by mm. is that if you wake up in the morning and you don't love what you do then you really need to question why you're doing it. Mm. Um, I studied, you know, I went to university. I've kind of followed the traditional route of A-levels, university. And at university, I realized that, that what I was studying was probably not the lines that I wanted to go down. It was engineering. Naturally, 90% of engineers going to finance, work in the city. And I was like, 
I feel that this is not my pipeline. So I woke up one morning and made the decision to make a massive change. The first um, piece of advice is if you don't like it, don't do it. Yeah. Second advice. What would you say a second advice is? Second and third. Um, for me, I think taking kind of stock of the last year within the business, there's been a lot of times where we've been driven by kind of a few major clients that we had. They were, you know, effectively 70% of our turnover was coming from three different clients. And I didn't at the time account for the risk that that posed to posed to the business. Mm -hmm. um, and now we've kind of set a trajectory, having lost one of them and actually asked one of them that, well, suggested that we're not going to do any more work for them just because we didn't quite align um, to diversify our client base. Um, instead of working on one or two massive ones, I'm now dealing with 10 to 12 small ones. Um, awesome. So the second piece of advice is kind of diversify. Is that what you're saying? Uh, diversing or, or diluting our client pool so that it's not specific like we're not reliant on a single a couple of mm -hmm. large resource like effective client base or income gotcha. streams. makes mm -hmm. sense and thirdly the third piece of advice you um share with other business owners um i would say that our team is probably the number one reason we get work uh, mm -hmm. people are fundamentally what an agency lives on um, you can get one graphic designer and another, but they will provide 20, like two complete different viewpoints on on the solution that a team needs. So mm. I, I find it really important that we find the right people to fit into our journey. And based on the way that our business model is, it is based on growing that. So there's going to be specialists in different things. We're looking for people that work in kind of the TikTok space right now and how we can leverage that um and leverage that for our clients um the intention is is that if we bring them a client they they get the work you know it's a nice Amazing. shared income stream um so yeah we are looking for more people but there's a lot of people that suggest they can do it um but i'm yet to see someone that can awesome awesome as we close i've got five quick questions for you or rather five quick words i'd like to blast these words at you and i'd like you to just probably just share what's the first word that comes to your mind when I say each word, right? It could be quite dangerous. It could be quite fun. But what's the first word that comes to you when I say the word university? Not for oh, one word. Sorry? One word? Did you say yep. one word? Oh, um, Take it two if you want. <laughs> three. Um, not for everyone, but. Not for everyone. There we go. That's fine. Second word, leadership. Stressful. <laughs> Stressful, fair enough. Failure. Learning. Learning. Accountants. Necessary. Necessary. And finally, the word opportunity. Growth. Growth. Bevel, it's been absolutely fantastic speaking to you today. Thank you for the opportunity to understand your journey, share it with the business community. I'm uh, pretty sure a lot of your learnings are, are going to be useful for them. It'll be wonderful. Hopefully a path across again in the future. Until then, thank you for your time. Thanks, Amit. Appreciate it.